Okay, sip, sip. Thanks, Bruce, for the reminder. Yeah, so yeah, going back at yeah, the topic is about the duality between working in God and resting in God. Kind of why we want to discuss this all. I think the idea of resting in God is a topic that can sometimes sound contradictory, because on one hand, uh, it's like God wants us to rest in Him, right, and not be worried, and He wants us to trust Him, right. But and apa? Yeah, to rest and but at, in 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 a rested state, you know. But at the same time, I think God also calls us to serve to be sacrificial, to give our lives to him, to become salt and light, right? Which obviously that requires about work and time and effort. So what exactly does God mean when he tells us to rest in him? Basically, that's the main question, see, that we're going to be exploring tonight. Um, and I, yeah, I hope this is relevant for you. Personally, for me, I think it's very hard, yeah, these days to balance uh, work and life. I think even though that Everything's online and digital, and we can work up by everything to be a little bit efficient now. We don't have to commute and stuff. I also feel that apa, it's it's harder because it's hardly any chance that we can catch a break between like one meeting to the next. We can like slot in so many things at once without having without needing break if we if we push ourselves, right? And I, I know like I was talking with a few people, okay, you know, like yeah, doing Zoom online meetings can also get uh, really tiresome and really stressed about. Kan? So yeah, I think these days I just feel like apa, it's easy to feel more pressure than before. Gitu. And I think that um, speaking of pressure, I think, um, yeah, I wanna ask, how are we doing as a community when it comes to pressure? So I wanna us to do like a, 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 apa, a simple menti, yeah? So uh, we can answer uh, this question together. Um, one second. Uh, so yeah, can you guys see the menti dot apa the number and the atas? Can you can you guys see it? Bisa ya, awesome. Yes, awesome. bisa. Yeah. Great, great. Yeah. So that's the question we want to. Jadi the question we want to answer is. Uh, yeah, how good am I at handling the pressures that life throws at me? There's five, there's a scale of like one to five. Just pick the one that you feel like yeah, you can most relate to, right? What, like what, what, which one that suits you the most today? All right, noise, noise, for people answering. Here we go, here we go. Okay, it's it's definitely leading towards the apa ya, kayak the stress side. Yeah, ada some apa, ada a few people yang cocky nih, pretty good in this. <laughs> okay, actually we have a good balance layer sekarang. We have one guy yang very sombong. <laughs> All right, we'll wait for apa, I'll, I'll wait for more answers to, to come in kali ya. All right, yeah, nice. So I think, yeah, quite balanced, Laya. Um, it's it's definitely more on the apart, the be leading towards people are, it is a struggle that I think we as, I mean, I personally, I, I will share myself later, obviously. I think it definitely seems that as a community, kita definitely wrestling with this, Laya. And yeah, there's some of us that's pretty good at handling it. So that's that's awesome news. And yeah, the one guy I'm very, very, very confident in it. That's also good news. Um, awesome. Apa? I think like, yeah, I think I had this, it's what I expected. So I think these results are given that, yeah, a lot of us can obviously Asian culture and, you know, expectations, peer pressure, family expectations. Makes a lot of sense, I think. So, yeah, so um, thanks for thanks for doing the Menti. Um, Goba, I'm going to uh, share my presentation now. Um, give me a second. You guys can see my screen? You say, okay, yeah. So thank you guys for doing the menti. Kalau for me, this is a meme lah. This is a meme on the pressure that I feel some on my day-to-day -day life, right? Sometimes I feel like Chris Pratt in Jurassic World at a lot of dinosaurs. I need to make sure I need to juggle these properly so that I don't get eaten alive. Obviously in the most left-hand side is career, yeah, and making money. For me, I'm not an apa, I'm just working with the family business 
But uh, given that I already have a kid and that my parents are retired, definitely like when it comes to career and money, it's an area that um, I really, apa ya, it's always like something that setting lah pressuring to me. Then obviously in the middle, I have my wife, Pris. So in that picture, dia lagi, dia lagi makan, but yeah, I mean, Pris is actually not the most demanding person now, I think, because as some of you all know, Pris, you guys, she's quite more introverted. And yeah, even to me, dia juga lumayan, apa, yeah, at times demanding juga lah, but yeah, but not as bad as Sienna, actually. Sienna is my kid. So Sienna is actually someone yang I think actually apa, demandingnya lumayan parah banget, especially when it comes to playtime. So yeah, I, I never expected that a kid can add so much pressure to my life. Yeah. But yeah, having Sienna, and I mean, it's obviously a blessing banget, tapi yeah, the amount of pressure that she can put in, you know, because yeah, she's, she just wants to keep playing, they're always nagging, right? And yeah, like Marshall was mentioning tadi, kayak you don't know what she actually needs, gitu kan? and you have to play that guessing game. So, so yeah, that's a little bit about myself. But besides that, there's even more stuff, right? So on top of that, then we got Jem, who apa? Yeah, who last week pushed me quite hard that I need to be the PIC for Jem talk, gitu. And um, yeah, apa? Yeah, jokes aside, I think it was actually I wrestled with it a little bit, say, because these days work is also okay, yeah, like I mentioned, that it can can be cumbersome and quite busy. So. Yeah, I was wrestling a bit, but I knew that you know what I need to do. I want to do this. I want to do the gem talk, gitu, and 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 contribute and serve you guys, gitu, kan? And on the right, and finally, yeah, the last thing that pressure, yeah, obviously, yeah, I, I, apa, we're more related with crypto, as as some of you may know. I'm that annoying guy in gem. Yeah, always talk about his own bags, you know, asking you to pump his bags, and you know, not just me, also with Bubula. But yeah, that's also another about another area I'll I'll touch on later lah in my sharing. But yeah, I think jokes aside, it's not easier uh, to focus on. Yeah, you guys all know this. Obviously, it's not easy to focus on all the different things in our lives. All of you pasti bisa relate. I know a lot of you are in you know demanding careers or you have like a demanding job, demanding parents. Maybe it's family business. Maybe it's maybe you are entrepreneur. And you know, you guys have a lot of opportunities that are presented in front of you, and each of them are always trying to yeah, pull you guys in. So I'm sure, yeah, about with this meme, you guys can all relate to it. You know, like um, I think that wanting to achieve and do well on all these different things is actually uh, good, yeah, and not wrong. But I think for me, when I try to chase after a lot of all of them all the time, you know, kind of wanting to perform in each of these categories. Without having rest, thought, it too, that becomes like the not the uh, most pleasant experience. And um, yeah, a recent an example of myself is of chasing after something without rest in God. I think is my experience doing a lot of the crypto stuff. Yeah, and I've shared this with with some bros. You uh, the chase really started because I got a few lucky breaks. And because of that, I would become overconfident that I can like, you know what, I, I can do this guy, I can grow, I can make this big, gitu kan? But eventually, like, because I had such high expectations for the stuff I was doing, day to day becomes like a, okay, it kind of becomes like a, a, a race, gitu. Like I have a checklist I have to fill out, you know? And um, apa, I started having an overly optimistic view that I could predict things and, Obviously, when the thing kind of goes the other way, which which always happens like that, it goes the other way. Like I feel like I'm carrying such a heavy burden gitu, on my shoulders, and yeah, it was not good because I started to miss my quiet times. Unfortunately, the better I got, bukannya I do more quiet time, I the opposite. Gitu. The better I got, the more projects I do, and then the more like oh, I don't need this quiet time. What apa gitu, kayak everything is going well, gitu, kan? and yeah, I took and apa yeah, I took the bear market like to hit me very hard to help me realize that yeah you know what you you need to really rethink kaya, priorities and look at this again and slowing down gitu. which is apa, yeah, this is apa, i want to share that because it's kind of a segue to apa, the anchor bible verse that i want to share for tonight and the chapter that i think spoke a lot to me in the past few weeks basically is in it uh, matthew chapter 11 verse 28 and 29 it says uh, come to me all of you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I think 
this is a, a yeah, a lot of you already know this verse you got, but yeah, let's look at the first itukali. Yeah, the first thing we should look at is the word yoke because it's not really a word that we use uh, day to day. What is the yoke exactly? Now, a yoke is the about a cross piece yeah, that is fastened over the necks of two animals attached to the plow so that they can pull. Essentially, the yoke helps the farmer to plow the fields more effectively using an about, uh, animal power, kan? like this image. And, you know, like just reading that verse, what Jesus is asking us to do with the yoke is basically kayak, to, for us to stop working and to doing things alone. Jesus is telling us to shift our weights onto his yoke and allow him to do the pulling. Gitu. But, you know, sometimes I can talk back to God. Gitu, kayak, okay, yeah, I'll use your yoke. But you know what? Kayak, I'm actually very weary and burdened. And I'm just trying to become someone now responsible for all the things that you put in front of me. Gitu, kan? But... But that mindset is not right. That, that mindset, actually, the wrong part is that it's not that God is asking too much of me that I have to, I have all these things that I'm responsible for. But it's more that it's because I'm just insisting I carry it all myself. And yeah, to be honest, from a few months back, like I mentioned earlier, there was a time that I really felt that, yeah, I really felt, but I kind of felt that I didn't need Jesus to carry anything for me. So I think during that time, apa my parents udah apa um real apa our family relationship sa lagi bagus we we apa we got a lot of apa um guidance gitu kan from from om Harlem and everyone and we were all healthy despite the pandemic Chris myself Sienna we were all healthy good we we had fun and everything and financially juga everything was very well so during that time yeah when during times of um apa ya, ya prosperous times I guess kayak, I think my attitude to Jesus was more like kayak, hey God, hey Tuhan kayak, I'm in a good place right now I think I, I can handle these things but yeah obviously that led to apa, um, jadi overconfident gitu kan. and um, yeah obviously it's not the right mindset gitu. and if you look at this yeah, kayak, there's a psalm that clearly shows how God sees us gitu. and we want to make sure that the way we view ourselves you guys the same way how God sees us right in Psalm 103, it says, for he knows how we are formed, he remembers that we are dust. Yeah, I think it's clear to see me, it's described how God, apa, uh, describe how small we are. Yeah, kan? In the other translation, it says that God remembers how small, how weak we are. So if um, if God views us like this, if he views me like this, then how should I view myself? Do I, should I view myself as someone young, someone young, capable and strong and powerful? And Apa? Or, 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 gimana? or do I have that humility you know, that I can see someone as, see myself, sorry, as someone yang weak and small you know, compared to God? I think it's okay to be confident. I think everyone here should be confident and we should all have courage here yeah, to be confident. Tapi, yeah, where does that source of confidence come from? You know? okay, do we realize that we are weak and then we are confident because we know that we are sambil gandengan and holding hands with Jesus? That we, 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 we need to have that confidence to come. From knowing that, yeah, we have we are we can be confident because we have intimate relationship with Jesus Kito and that we are rested in him. Apa, um, that's that's where confidence should come from, Kito, because without him, like which is the psalm, like what this psalm says, Kito, that God, God, kita tuh, kita tuh is very small and weak. Yeah, and that, that that that's what I feel. That's what I felt with like a, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I I was like very, very confident with myself, even though I, I don't tell people I don't say it but I definitely feel inside kayak, I, I got apa, kayak, like like I felt the lack of need gitu loh. Yeah, kan? so yeah that's my that's the first point I want to make and yeah one I think one more thing that we can take away yeah, from this picture and I apa, um I think one thing it also definitely clarifies yeah, is that Jesus is not against us to work hard yeah and to perform I think that he doesn't. Ex he, I don't think he used the 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 apa, the yoke analogy, and then like assume kita just take the yoke and just sleep on the yoke, right? And let God do all the pulling. That's obviously not the case. But I think he like a farmer. Gitu, there's a reason why he used the farmer. He expects us to take the yoke and actually plow the field. Gitu, and each of us, you know, each of us will do that differently, gitu, depending on our calling, depending on our skill set. Gitu, kan? But yeah, the the point of the yoke analogy is that. On top of like, yeah, one, we have to apa, shift the weight to God, right? But another thing is that 
when we shift our weights to God, kita bisa, we can accomplish even more gitu, because we work together with him, right? And how we do that, the key, uh, one thing is just the relationship with Jesus. You know, when we work, think about it, like when we work from a place where we are rested and connected with Jesus, kita bisa, we can become more effective and more uh, but sustainable in our work and work becomes more fulfilling. Gitu. I think that, yeah, personally, I think when my mind is set on a higher purpose, right, which is to give it about my all in my responsibilities because I know that Jesus gave me this opportunity because I, I, I'm grateful for it because upon knowing that, you know what, I, I use this resource because of helping other people. I feel like when, when I do that, like I just feel like there's much less, like so much less mental and spiritual weight where Sisanya is just like more physical weight, right? More, more on my physiology. So yeah, I, I feel like this is just a short sharing I have on what I feel to become like a, a, something that was a very meaningful for me. And, you know, like, I think resting in Jesus you know, is like something where Apa really, really applies to me. I just see. So um, um, this is the first part of my sharing. I'll have, I have one more. I have another part that I want to do. But I think before we go there, uh, I'm going to pass it, pass the floor now uh, to one of the brothers, Jesse Arthur. And um, yeah, Arthur can, can uh, want to wanna share as well. So, yeah. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Joe, for for sharing those two verses. Yeah, um, I think uh, maybe just a little bit of sharing of, of what's been happening in my life and how it relates a little bit to to Matthew eleven. Um, so this year is a very big year in my business. Um, we have quite a lot of targets and a lot of special projects happening. Um, we're doing some major reconcept for the mall in Surabaya. We're rezoning some areas in Jitos that needs to be filled um, by Q3 or Q4. Um, I have to get the hotel in Surabaya up and running, and I have to chase after you know occupancies or business basically in Bali because hotel business is recovering now, right? So on top of that, my company is doing a lot of major restructuring in the management. Um, so that involves a lot of firing, a lot of employer resignation, um, tons of interviews, training, and rebuilding the management from the ground up, basically. Um, so sometimes it does feel like time is not my friend, as there are so many things to plan and achieve this year, you know, with very little human resources at the moment. So I feel that, and I think what's worse is that I feel that it's all on me to make this work. Um, and it does feel never ending and overwhelming sometimes. And I think not just with work, but I'm, I'm sure everybody has something that can be never ending and overwhelming, right? And I, I'm sure also rather than it getting easier, you know, it feels like the challenges continues to pile up, right? Um, and as a result, I think in my case, you know, the more I let it overwhelm me, the more I pressure myself, um, the more I am distracted and distant from God, right? Um, and as a result, my quiet time has felt dry and praying feels difficult, you know. Um, whatever I try to do with God, it, it feels a little bit um, ineffective, I guess, right? Um, next slide, Joe. So um, several weeks ago, I told, I told some of the brothers who were close to me, um, you know, it may seem like uh, I have it all together and that I'm having fun arranging all the gem gatherings and the sports gatherings and so on and so forth. But you know, um, weekdays was was tough, right? Um, you know, I wasn't I wasn't really okay, and and I was getting buried with a lot of these uh, pressures from work, basically. Um, I was overwhelmed, basically, and 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 fortunately, I reached out to my brothers, uh, and that's when they started. They shared to me uh, today's anchor verse, which is Matthew eleven, right? Um, I think to add a little bit to what Gio was saying just now, I think. You know, this, this metaphor of a yoke, right, is, is often misunderstood um, as to something that, you know, you shift 100% of the, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the weight to God, right? Whereas actually the goal of a yoke is to accomplish more by working together, right? Jesus is telling us to stop working on our own and instead work with him. Um, his yoke is supposed to make burdens bearable and journeys enjoyable. So... I feel like when I harness myself to him, you know, to his grace, his power, his sufficiency, everything changes, right? Uh, but here's what often happens, though. I, you know, I, I pray, I plead, I tell Jesus why I need help. I complain about the weight that I'm carrying. I ask for answers. And then I stand up, I shoulder my burden alone again. 
I walk away and then it's the same thing all over again, all right? Um, with this analogy, I think the rest that Jesus promised is love, healing, and peace with God, yeah? Uh, not necessarily the end of all labor or challenges. Um, Jesus doesn't actually need you and me to get the job done, you know? He can snap his finger and, and everything would be okay, right? Um, and I think sometimes we take ourselves so seriously as if the success of the universe depended on our perfect performance where sebenarnya it, 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 it has nothing to do with us sometimes, it's all gone, right? So again, the question is, you know, why, why a yoke, right? Why do we use a yoke as a metaphor, right? Um, why does it have to be something that we carry together, right? Why can't God have mercy on us and just snap his fingers to get rid of our problems, right? Um, and I think, you know, I, I, read, I read some materials on this, you know, and Joe shared some materials on this. And I think the point isn't getting work done, ironically as that sounds, and the point of the work, it, the point is, you know, the work is actually there to build our relationship with God, right? Because there is that work that needs to be done together with God. There is that work that is impossible for you to do alone, right? Uh, that's how you grow your relationship with God, actually. You know, he wants us to live life by his side, you know, connected to him, learning from him and being led by him uh, instead of, you know, leading our own life, right? No way. Um, and I think a relationship with God changes meaningless, frustrating labor into spiritual productivity and purpose. Um, and we are freed up to be a blessing for others as God has been a blessing for us. So I think that's that's a little bit of sharing that that I got there from this uh, reflection view. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for being vulnerable. And I appreciate your sharing. I think about what you shared about how, yeah, the work is there. It's actually an opportunity for us to be to collaborate with God, right? And to rely on him. I think that's a very kaya, healthy and positive perspective, I think, on like, what does it mean to work in God? Yeah, that, but we still maintain being rested in God. And yeah, I think what you're going through is also, apa, yeah, as a guy, I guess. And um, yeah, I know that you're handling um, a, a big apa, corporate empire. Yeah, <laughs> so, apa, and yeah, apa, um, it must it's not easy it's definitely not easy but definitely i appreciate the perspective that you that you've shared today um so yeah awesome sharing um and if i can summarize the whole first point that i'm trying to make well me and arthur are trying to make i think the first one is basically is jesus carrying our stuff right so um who's carrying my burden is it is jesus carrying my burden or am i carrying it all by myself am i feeling am i about feeling strong and overconfident do i actually have a longing i need for jesus right I, I was sharing earlier that when i felt that i didn't need him that's when actually jesus is not carrying my things right and yeah and finally are we also lazy you know? are we proactively coming to god right through 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 many ways through prayer through 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 the church through the community etc right i think these are just some key takeaways that i feel like i want to continue to reflect on i think in this past coming weeks yeah um yeah finally i think jesus offers um his love and his grace to everyone no matter to yeah no matter what you've done and i think all of this in conclusion basically making the point that the whole point of like how we can get jesus to carry our stuff yeah, we just have, need to have an intimate relationship with him that's basically about the whole point and now that would, so the first point is about who's carrying the burden, right? And the second point that I want to make, going back to the, again to the Matthew verse, is actually what burden that we're actually carrying, right? So yeah, first we we get Jesus to help us to carry our weight, but at the same time, we also cannot expect Jesus to become like a bellboy, right? To carry every single thing of our stuff, right? I'm curious to know like what type of burdens that we are carrying today that makes us that makes us wary. Maybe we can make this a little bit interactive. You guys can type in the chat, like what are some of your burdens, right? Anyone? All right, we have we have uh, zero answers so far. <laughs> All right. All right, Mike. Mike is saying 
have have to keep calm even while others aren't. That's definitely apa. That's definitely like a high pressure situation. Yeah, I think that I can definitely relate dealing with people who are reactive, especially apa uh, more senior members at work. I, I can definitely relate to that. Family, work, um, community. Okay, very broad, Bella. Thank you. Restarting in a new country. <laughs> pressure to deliver growth at work. Okay, yeah. Those are yeah. That that that's. I mean, that's definitely very very challenging. Both of us, both those things. Yeah. <laughs> of course, my wife says protecting myself and family from COVID. Yep. But yeah, that's. I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm laughing, but it's not a no joke. You get yeah. Especially like a couple months back, expectations, fear of future. Uh, yeah, fear of change. All right, having Bella says having pressure. I mean, I still I go much younger, but okay. Yeah, raising raising my children well, being being a good spouse, a good wife, good mom, definitely awesome. I think yeah, those are all things that yeah, man, those are all of it are like legitimate burdens, right? That 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 can make us weary and can really be taxing to us. So thank you guys, thank you for sharing. Um, I think that sorry. Yeah, feeling these types of burdens, I think is not wrong. Yeah, I think it's only human that we feel like all those burdens, right? And and they're heavy, right? And and some are are, are facing that are that are heavier than others. And you know the big the, the bigger problem basically it arises when we carry them alone. I think, and when we, you know, when we carry it alone, when we don't share it to people, and we just let it be weighing on us for like a prolonged period of time, I think. Yeah, everyone had some great answers, but I think these are these were some of the ones that I thought were um, very very relevant. I think for for us, yeah. I think the first one is about like yeah, getting things done, especially in Asian culture. You know, it's just very prevalent that our parents expect us to be, apa yeah, like just be be productive. We we push ourselves to the limit. We we get the good grades, get the good job, right? Um, and just have that perfectionism. Or maybe it's ourselves that we create like some kind of unrealistic, unrealistic standard, you know, kind of like what I did when in my earlier sharing. Sometimes we have those standards because of a past success, and maybe there are past failures as well, right? Or feelings of guilt, feeling that maybe God cannot accept you because you haven't proved yourself or you haven't put in the work. Obviously, there's misconception, right? Obviously, in, in the Bible, it, that, that doesn't say that at all. Or maybe the most common one is the future, right? Like everyone wrote earlier about like money, spouse, future spouse, our health, and even uh, peer pressure and feelings of FOMO. Yeah, I'm not, I'm personally not free from many of these burdens. I think for me, the heaviest is like when I see an opportunity in front of me, I just want to capture it, you know, capture all that opportunity because I'm scared that that opportunity doesn't come back. But you know what? I need to remember that whatever opportunity that comes or whatever you know, what, yeah, whatever opportunity is faced in front of me, I just need to remember that at the end of the day, Jesus has provided for me for the past 30 years. I think um, I, as a person, I don't, I'm not perfect in any way, but my life is not perfect, but it's also not overly difficult. I think there's a lot of things that I can easily be grateful and celebrate for, right? Having a healthy, healthy child, having a wife that respect and love me, right? These are all things I, I didn't have just a couple of years back, right? A family business, which is essentially a safety net and about parents that like really love me, want to be close with me, very mind giant to me, right? These are all actually blessings from God. And yeah, I think personally for me, I just need to learn that as long as I do my best and I do it with the right heart and intention, then Jesus is already happy, you know, and he's already... But that's that's all he wants me to do, right? Like what Arthur mentioned earlier, Jesus doesn't need you to do it. You know? He doesn't need you to do it. He can do it himself, right? But sometimes we just put that additional burden for us that, you know what, okay, this is what I should do, right? God already gave me so much and I have to be able to do this. And yeah, about learning to stop being a perfectionist and leaving the rest to God, yeah, basically. Yeah, ultimately, just from this Bible verse, right? All you need is basically about food, clothing, 
and then pro yeah drinks and probably after that like shelter relationship right that's all we actually need and that's all all of us we already have it you know here right and that's just something that i feel like um you know it's it's very simple but it's something that we have to continue to remember when when we when we start going autopilot then we need to start remembering these things as well another verse i want to share is here yeah in first peter where it says that humble yourself therefore under god's mighty hand that he may lift you up in due time cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you what i get out of this is basically yeah am i making sure that i'm humble in my values and my priorities um are the weights and burdens i'm carrying actually showing that i'm prioritizing god to do, do my do my values aligned with jesus kind of, which focuses on love more and relationship as opposed to focusing on being a successful person or a great person right um do i have gratitude for all the things i've already have and achieved without this apa i think i can feel burden i think these are these are i mean it's not really an inconvenient truth it, it, it is a bit harder to swallow but yeah i think that jesus's yoke will not really be used yeah it won't be used to carry values and burdens that are more selfish in nature right but it's supposed to carry things that align with him and speaking of um, jesus values there's a, a a quote that i want to share about values too yeah so this is a quote from uh one of my apa ya my favorite writer which is mark manson and this is yeah this is one of his quote it's actually in the form of an nft which you can buy <laughs> but apa yeah apa that's not the point obviously and um yeah but he just writes very very simply you know to value x we must reject non x gitu kan and it's just very, very simple logic for us to be a disciple of jesus then we must value jesus right that's that's the definition of disciple but if we value jesus then we must reject the things that jesus did, didn't didn't stand for okay i remember during um arthur's baptism yeah one of the things that he shared and like one of his favorite breakthrough reali was realizing that true freedom was the ability to for him to be able to genuinely say no to certain things gitu kan and about for me in the past few months actually it was very hard it was very very hard to say no to things during a crypto nft bull run ya yeah. apa um, because we were early things were launching all the time like we were apa we were always multiplying our investment to the point that kayak yeah, i i literally stopped tracking my money so that everything was going up all the time and because of that i was like trapped gitu i i couldn't say no what something i just have to like yes i will i will buy it and let's go gitu and to the point like my computer had so many apa discord server sampai it breaks down it was it's always my computer is like constantly kepanasan um yeah and apa yeah it was apa sih i'm just trying to share idea yeah, at like apa i was quite mia juga gitu like I was MIA from pretty much everyone that was not doing NFT so it was the person I was talking with was yeah yeah you guessed it last year Arthur and um yeah sadly now it's bear market and a lot of it is lost right a lot of the things that I was working for is already lost but yeah looking back I felt that okay, if I just involved Jesus you know, I think it would have been much more balanced less stressed more I would feel more enjoying the work, you know, and yeah, arguable, but maybe I would even be more profitable if actually Jesus was involved. You can, but yeah, that's a long story, lah. But yeah, overall, it was a lesson that I just needed needed to learn, you know, that we need to make sure our values, nih, that aligns with Jesus, you know, or not, our we will always be carrying like a, a heavy weight on top of us. Um, yep, that's my sharing. Um, I'm gonna apa? I want to share the. the stage to another another bro yeah chris vijaya to share so apa uh, chris i'm gonna apa uh, yeah i'm gonna pass it to you now thanks so much you for for your sharing and uh yeah i, I really uh like how you uh, how you un unconsciously or consciously slip all of these nfts nft references <laughs> uh, during the presentation yeah, i think that <laughs> 
I like how, how, you, how you subconsciously try to promote the NFT. Yeah, yeah, yeah two birds, one stone. <laughs> Gotta wait for my final slide. Two, two birds, one stone, yeah. <laughs> sip, sip, yeah. Uh, I think, like, for... Uh, uh, thanks for sharing it with you. I think, like, the, the key takeaways, I think, um, for me is... Uh, first of all, is, like, taking a look at into uh, what what's burdening us and why it's burdening us uh, uh, in the first place, yeah. Like, to really... Uh, introspect and, and take a look at our heart uh, whether the thing that's burdening us is it really uh, necessary that it, it burdens us or are uh, God and 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 uh, um, other more more important biblical things should take priority over uh, uh, that thing and and also I think like the the, the second point is like um, when we take a look back actually at, the, at these things that that burdens us um, uh, how how small is it compared to the blessings that we actually already receive here? Yeah? I think we we should always uh, uh, count our blessings, and that will actually minimize our help minimize our burden as well. So I just want to share a, a little bit of uh, example as well um, uh, from my life. So um, uh, actually, like I started my career as as a corporate person. Yeah, like I I I started. Uh, uh, from finance and and at, at that time during uh, uh, when I was working in, in in corporate, my mindset was was uh, was always basically if I if I always uh, do if I always prepare well and and I do my best and things like that I can I, I can achieve things like that's sort of my my mindset and and I'm I'm in control of my own destiny uh, so to speak so uh, starting my, my career in finance is very uh, goal oriented target oriented num numbers oriented and and the thing that i kept thinking about is uh, uh how to hit the targets how to achieve things how to move on to better careers right so uh, starting from the from the big four I, I moved to a bank uh dbs bank and like my mindset has always been the same um and at that time i moved to google as well uh, i was, was working with you as well for for a few years there and uh the mindset has always been the same, especially I'm, I'm also in sales in, in Google. It's, it's always been about uh, uh, working hard to, to achieve your targets, right? And, and uh, since all of the system is, is already in place, as long as you do your part, you'll be able to achieve the, the target. That's sort of my, my mentality, I think, going, going, going through work. Yeah. But in uh, 2018, actually, uh, my, my career trajectory totally changed. Uh, after doing my MBA, I... I I decided to start a business um, with my brother-in-law and, and a friend as well. Uh, we started a, a building construction business. Yeah. So uh, in the course of the building construction business, uh, it's doing, do, doing your own business versus corporate is totally different. Uh, in your own business, like nothing uh, uh, goes as planned and people don't really follow up on their words and, and, and just everything, the, the whole experience is, is totally different. And it really, it really shocked me uh, actually. And there was, there's one incident that, that actually really uh, uh, helped me grow um, spiritually as well uh, during my time in the construction business. So at that time, like we, uh, uh, as young entrepreneurs, like we, our clients were also young, entrepreneurs as well like property developer who want to develop a residential housing project and we were thinking that oh um, uh, since we we know each other and and these guys are our friends as well right uh, uh, we knew him they're also for uh, foreign grads and uh, we're we're friends for a while so oh, why, why don't we we do business together like we can build their 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 development and yeah and basically we can we can be their contractor right like they uh, we can be their uh, building construction partner. So with that mindset, like we did a few projects with them. Like the the first project, uh, we really took a loss for them uh, since there's a lot of problem in the in the field with a lot of hidden costs and a lot of uh, mafia costs. Yeah, so we we really took a loss for for these guys in the first project. And uh, going into the the second project, which is a, a much bigger project, it was 186 units in in Jilabon. And we we were very excited, right? Like uh, we thought we had a good relationship. We, we already took the the first loss, and they, they they value our partnership as well. So going going into that into that project, uh, we were very uh, optimistic actually, and and we and we work well together, right? And everything was was fun and games, right? And we we were building the the unit. We already built like uh, 100 units at that time. Uh, in in the mid project, uh, there was a problem, right? 
So uh, what happened was um, in in the beginning we already specify uh, in in our contract with them that anything building related that's our responsibility, but anything land land related that's their responsibility because because they're they're supposed to take care of of the land and make sure that it's safe to build on. So we we just took their word for it, but. Apparently, uh, in the mid construction, like when we were uh, constructing, was in the summer, so everything was still doing going well. Uh, during the rainy season, uh, uh, some of the uh, some of the like actually a lot of the houses, uh, almost all of the houses, uh, there's some problem with the uh, with the land moving, and hence like uh, a lot of there's a lot of uh, structural problem, and uh, some of the ceramic that we that we built all went up, and it was a lot of damages. Uh, essentially in the project, right? Um, but since we were working well together, like uh, we thought we can talk it through, right? So it, it, it shouldn't be uh, uh, much of a problem. And especially we, we already have this uh, in, the, in our working contract as well. So we thought, oh, it shouldn't be too much of a problem. It, it, it should be pretty straightforward to solve. And what happened was we actually hired a, a third party independent uh, consultant to do a soil study, right? And, and they determined that, oh, okay, it's like, it's uh, it's actually the the soil is the issue, right? So and and with that information, we 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 bring it up to our uh, partners, our our client, and um, when our first meeting went pretty well, actually, like they were, oh, okay, sure, like let's let's talk about it, let's discuss a solution and and and, and things like that, and uh, suddenly, like uh, within the span of like a, uh, a couple of days, uh, in our next meeting, they they totally changed their attitude. Uh, and they were like, uh, oh, so like you guys have to take full responsibility for this, right? And and we, we were pretty shocked um, actually, and we were like trying to come up with other solutions, like oh, uh, why don't you guys uh, use your own consultants? And like we we can do uh, uh, we can do like a like a like a split responsibility or or uh, things like that. But they but uh, it got even more heated, and I I think um, from from my part, right? Like I'm I'm actually like the the sort of the the type of guy that one I really want things to go my way, especially when everything is already proper. Uh, I, I I was pretty angry as well, right? Like when when this happened, and two, like I I I'm normally a, a very nice person to uh, all of our partners and 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 friends, uh, and I try not to cause any trouble. But if someone uh, caused trouble, like for no reason, I, I I would be like really pissed actually at that time. Like I I I I. I almost flipped as well, and I really felt, felt uh, betrayed, and I really felt like uh, we were being treated um, unfairly, uh, actually. Uh, so, so with that, like it was a, a very big struggle. Like uh, uh, I was doing uh, Bible study as well with with Gio and TJ at the time, and we we had a lot of prayers and we we discussed it. But I think like all of my prayer was also directed to. Uh, uh, the the solution that is favorable for us, uh, and and not really uh, surrendering it to 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 God, right? And 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 not really like surrender surrendering our yoke to God. And there's there's not really much. Uh, uh, my my priority is still like getting justice for our business versus um, actually uh, uh, prioritizing uh, God and and love right basically and and uh, 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 the things that we are supposed to do so that was like a, a, a very big struggle yeah, for me uh, it didn't come overnight but I think like uh, the next meetings it gets worse and worse and these guys started to uh, the meetings get start, uh, gets very heated up and these guys started to, to swear at us and all of the animals uh, language uh, uh, come out during the meeting and it was it was getting pretty ugly uh, until in the end uh, uh, basically we we brought up our legal contract right like hey like you guys are supposed to be responsible for this and and then they're like they're like okay like let's not talk anymore like the next time I meet you it'll be in court uh, and you're going to be talking to our lawyer right? so it it it's it's pretty bad uh, at that time and I I, I was feeling like uh, very angry actually I, I'm very angry at, at being uh, treated unfairly like uh, I thought these guys. We're friends, and we had a good agreement, and there's a business contract, and and everything like went on the drain, right? Uh, 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 at that time, so it took a lot of. Uh, uh, I think doing doing the the uh, uh, spending time with with uh, Gio and TJ, doing the Bible study, doing prayers and quiet time. Uh, even though at that time I had a wrong intention, it 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 still 
definitely influenced me in a much positive way versus the alternative. Because at the time I was seeking advice from from worldly uh, uh, from worldly friends as well, right? Friends, family, and all of them were like, "You, you guys already won on top of like the uh, legally, right?" So. Uh, I can give you like a nice lawyer, like just hajar aja man, these guys, like, and like I have, a, I have a police connection, hajar aja these guys, and so, so like I think like the the input that that I got from from the Bible and from from Gio and uh, and, and DJ, I think I think it really apa ya, it really resonates with my heart, even though my heart is not aligned yet, you know, uh, I think um, uh, at that time. So over time, like very uh, slowly but surely. Uh, kita keep on praying uh, uh, for this issue yeah and and i think like slowly like uh, i realized that instead of god trying to change my my situation and and just uh, uh, giving us like the like uh, a favorable decision over this matter god god actually is slowly trying to change my heart right uh, and and uh, slowly i i i i begin to realize that oh Uh, I think I really have to let go of this burden, and uh, my heart is in the wrong place uh, in the beginning, and and I really need to re recalibrate my my values, right, so to speak. So slowly but surely, like we we decided to like sort of let it go and 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 forgive them, like uh, forgive our counterparty, and we just do whatever they wanted us to do. And that was a very difficult decision, especially for my partners who are not doing the study, but. Uh, Uh, in the end, like we decided to go uh, that way because it might get even uglier, right? Uh, right then, so, so yeah, like I, I, I think that was like a very, a very big turning point for me because uh, I, I just felt like even though uh, uh, justice is not served and like sort of um, uh, I didn't get what I want and I, and I felt betrayed, but ultimately I can really uh, take my burden off and just leave it uh, to God. And and uh, really trust in God that that He is actually the the uh, ultimate judge. Yeah, I think. Yeah. Uh, and uh, one thing that that really helped me as well was when was when uh, I was counting our blessing, right? And just taking a step back and not focusing on the problem and looking at it from like a bigger picture. So uh, just like uh, really. Thinking that oh, uh, if this actually if we let it go, uh, we can still absorb the losses and uh, the company can can still uh, move forward. And God has been blessing us with with a lot of projects as well. And there's a lot of projects in the pipeline. So just take, taking a step back, uh, praying for it, and getting the right uh, support. I think that was like very very uh, life changing for me. And it was it's definitely like uh, 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 made me grow a lot in in, in my spiritual uh, uh, journey actually. Yeah, so I think uh, yeah, just uh, I just learned that never put like a uh, like a limit on 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 God's power and and God will if He doesn't change our situation, He will always change our hearts uh, 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 when we rely on Him and and let Him take the yoke off. And once that happens for me, I really got like the. The, the peace yeah the, the the peace in my soul and the rest that 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 Arthur was uh, mentioning earlier actually and and it, and it really frees me uh, at that time and I didn't think about that problem anymore and it it really frees me to just focus on loving one another spending time with one another and, and really just uh, going back to uh, uh, what God has uh, designed for us so I think uh, that's for my sharing thanks thanks for listening guys yeah awesome awesome sharing. Chris, I think about yeah, I remember that and yeah, it's already a while back, but yeah, it's definitely about very tough. Yeah, I don't think I've ever faced an issue like that, right? When about I I bet that it would have been it would it wouldn't be easy. I think to let God change your heart, right? I think that was the great point that I got from your sharing. I feel like sometimes we can let go of our burden by not letting not 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 expecting God to fix everything, the whole situation, but By just allowing him to fix our heart, that's I think that's the number one thing that I got from your sharing. But yeah, that's very awesome, Chris. And about like yeah, prioritizing and aligning the values, right? So, thank you, bro, for your sharing. So um, so yeah, but in summary, the second point is about if the first point was about who's carrying our bag, the second point is about what's actually in the bag, right? Whether our values align with Jesus' values. 
can I say no to certain things or am I trapped so that I, ha I have to keep doing it, keep doing it? Do I have that freedom? And, and it's fine to be worried, but of course that we don't want to entertain it for very long, right? Now, that's it for my share, our sharing. Um, now we wanna uh, kind of do like a QA. Like if anyone has any questions, please uh, share it in the chat and maybe like we can have a casual discussion about it or we can do breakout after if there's no questions, that's also okay. But for now, um, we, wanted, we do wanna share like, okay, we talk a lot about shifting our weight onto Jesus, right? So what is basic, what is actually the practical about this? I, I wanna, I'll start by sharing one myself. So I think the first very clear practical for me is friendship. I think friendship is the one of the easiest way that you shift your way to Jesus, right? So the way that we shift the weight is that we shift it to people from the church, from the community, right? We, um, yeah, we if we have friendship with them, we 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 and we respect each other, confidentiality. Then you know sometimes that we can share our burdens, right? And have and how to be a good friend. Yeah, we act as a listener, right? When we um, Obviously, because Jesus is carrying our burden, then we can also care, help to carry the burden for each other, right? We can do this by being a good listener, right? Actively meeting people, getting involved in people's lives, right? Don't be afraid to be, you know, don't be afraid to be labeled kepo, gitu, but yeah, respect everyone's confidentiality. And then it's okay to be involved, right? People have challenges, people have issues, maybe it's sensitive relationship issue. We can, we can still help them and they can still help us. Um, and obviously friendship, like interest group, like doing all the stuff that everyone is planning every day, that, that those are all things that we can, you know, use friendship to shift our way to Jesus. Um, as for me, so maybe um, I'm, I can ask, what about from, uh, from Arthur? Like what, what, are, what are like for you, what are like some practicals on how you can shift your way to Jesus? Yeah, sure. Um, I'll share, yeah. So, uh... I think a big, a big uh, yoke for me, gitu, and what helps me a lot, gitu, when I try to shift my way to Jesus is um, when I spend time and be vulnerable with the brothers, right? Um, I think a lot of people are new here, and if you guys don't know, you know, here in Gem we have something called uh, spend time, which is essentially spending time, but it's not always about Bible studies. Also, uh, it can be a hangout, it can be a sesi curhat, it can be you know, just catching up and fellowship or whatever. Intinya, you're you're building friendship lah with that specific time, right? Um, and I think I have, I think before about my Bible study, gitu, I've always been the kind of person that was never comfortable in being vulnerable. Um, and the reason for that is because I have this mindset where you know, who would want to hear my complaints and my whining and my 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 you know my worries, right? Um, I think an example of that, you know, I think I I've known Gio for almost 16 years now um, and I think ironically you know I've never I've never really shared uh, work related struggles to him right maybe until recently um, and I think the biggest tragedy right now for for a lot of people is when people uh, are scared to be vulnerable or are scared to be to share because they're scared of being not being supported or being judged and so on and so forth whereas actually you know um, and I was I was like that too right and I think when I uh actually uh, encourage myself or, or, or muster up the courage to actually talk to a lot of the people in gem uh, one of the biggest things that surprised me is that you know a lot of the problems that i'm going through are actually being uh, experienced by a lot of the brothers and sisters in church right and having that realization the realization uh, immediately shifts or lowers the weight because you know you're not you're not alone right i guess in in a lot of the struggles that you have right and i think um, having a friend, like, you know, like good friend in this sense, you know, kinds of help you um, encourage one another, right? Um, I think, I think that's, that's one uh, practical example. So definitely, you know, if there's anything uh, I could kind of emphasize in this, in this talk is that, you know, for everybody to kind of reach out, uh, whether you are in gem or whether you're not in gem, so I mentioned to everybody who's in church and just encourage one another. I think because you'll you you'll never know right what kind of impact that you will have on people's lives. I think. Um, secondly, uh, which is I guess somewhat similar to our theme in church, which is one another now, right? I think serving and being generous with your time um, is also good, right? Whether you are arranging fellowships, whether you are 
you know, serving in churches, PIC, you know, whether you are initiating a lot of activities, for example, you know, um, e e even if it's not, you know, per se, like reading the Bible word for word, I think, I think, you know, uh, that fellowship does uh, shift weights for a lot of people. Um, I think that, uh, you know, I have, I have this story, actually. Um, so uh, I met this lady once, you know, and she was, she was fighting cancer at the time. And at the clinic, you know, throughout the time, she was fighting really bad cancer. And um, apa namanya, when she, but, you know, even though her physique or her, her physical condition was not uh, uh, good for her to be walking around and meeting people and so on and so forth, you know, she, she forced herself to kind of check on everybody and, you know, how, see how everybody's doing and, you know, ask them how they're doing and stuff like that. And I asked her, you know, Tanto, why, you know, you should be resting, you know, you shouldn't be, uh, apa, you shouldn't be pushing yourself so much, gitu kan, nanti, nanti tambah parah sakitnya, gitu kan. And then she was like, you know, actually serving me, uh, me serving a lot of people, it takes, takes me away from my own problems, takes my mind off my own uh, pressures in a way. Um, so even though I am tired doing this, you know, I'm actually uh, a little bit more at peace, right? Um, and I think, you know, uh, in this novelty, it may be confusing, right? What shifting your way to Jesus is, but actually I think it's very practical when you can be vulnerable and serving. Um, you know. Dude, that's awesome, Boo. Yeah, man. I think about serving and yeah, learning to be vulnerable. Yeah, I think also, yeah, you had to learn it. And for me, I definitely had to learn it as well, especially having to apa, share certain things there yeah, about family, about apa, gitu kan? like those, those are some very good practicals. Boo. Thanks a lot for sharing, dude. What about Lou, Chris? What, what are some practicals that you can share? Sure, I think um, for for me, uh, practicals would definitely be uh, prayer and quiet time. Yeah, actually, so uh, I think it's uh, prayer and quiet time is definitely like the most important way uh, for us to maintain our uh, relationship with God, um, and it's it's the most uh, direct way that the direct way of communication uh, between us and God actually, and uh, I think. Um, uh, someone uh, said it in church. I think it was Obudi or TJ. Uh, that basically quiet time is is when uh, quiet time and reading our Bible and uh, reading scripture or uh, uh, listening to some uh, podcast or it could be anything, right? Like reading any spiritual books and and, and things like that. It took, when when you're doing that, is uh, is actually uh, God is actually speaking to us, right? And and we can really. Get, gain a lot of um, uh, wisdom and 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 insights and and things that really relate to our lives. You know, while when we are actually doing prayer, uh, you know, uh, kita yang actually speaking to God. You know, actually, so like when uh, uh, when we're doing prayer, we can really to uh, uh, to God. You know, and uh, every time after I do prayer, and I just uh, and I and you can pray about anything, right? Like you can. Uh, you can pray about uh, any of your plans, any of the the long term thing could be like short term, could be the day juga, uh, could be uh, the meal that you're having next. And uh, I think it, the like it's very good if you can constantly communicate with God, gitu ya, and and in, in, involve Him in in every part uh, uh, of our day, gitu. Um, and I think like every time we do that, like we always uh, feel like the burden lifted off, and and uh, we feel a sense of peace and. Uh, uh, lebih ke kita lepasin uh, our day and whatever comes next to God gitu ya, uh, 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 every time we we pray and and yeah and and I think like doing uh, uh, prayer and quiet time I uh, uh, I think uh, sometimes for me if I do it uh, uh, myself it could get repetitive or could be like uh, burn out juga ya gitu ya kayak sometimes kayak you can get you can get bored or uh, you can just uh, go through the motions you know, of, of 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 doing it. I think uh, doing it with other uh, brothers or sisters you bisa bisa uh, help a lot. Yeah, I think yeah. like like doing it with other people definitely helps you uh, gain uh, gain new perspective and you can bounce back ideas with with, with one another and bisa encourage one another juga gitu. Uh, bisa share more vulnerability with with one another juga. Jadi I think 
uh, definitely doing it together uh, can freshen up juga lah gitu and and the prayer uh, uh, and and quite fine. Um, yeah, I think uh, that's it from me. Nice, Chris. Yeah, ajak aja gue bro kalau mau prayer and quiet. <laughs> gue juga yeah, butuh. But yeah, I think that's very apa very very apa, another clear one lah ya that um yeah we need to have that healthy quiet time. Like at the end of the day, that's the that is the direct communication that we have with God, the best direct communication. So, yeah, this is advice for myself too, because yeah, I'm I I need to do it as well, um, better at least. Um, so yeah, apa, uh, thanks everyone, apa, uh, for for listening to the gem talk, Alia, yeah, since yeah, it's still 8:40, and I think we can just go to uh, breakouts if I can figure out how to do this and. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see if we if we have to apa, um, just just chat a little later, right? If whether we want to uh, regroup back together or as everyone must be asked in their breakouts, and yeah, we'll go from there. Awesome, guys. Let me figure out any breakouts. Gio, can you show the breakout questions, Gio? All right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, so these are the three questions that we have, right? So the first one is, what are the heaviest burdens that we are facing today? Why are they, and why? Why are they burdens to me? What will I do tomorrow to start shifting my weight to Jesus? And finally, how will focusing more on others lift my burdens? Just some um, uh, questions that you can use for your breakouts. Um, maybe, Arthur, if you can help to share this in the gem talk, in the WhatsApp, so when it's gone. Thanks, bro. Um, we have, okay, we have 39. So, okay, so by, yeah. Uh, all right, the rooms are, are there. If I open the breakouts, I do, I, I'm not assigned a room. Eh? Yeah, gue juga. Kok gue, gue enggak ya? Um, I think you are, bro. Little room hey, three, guys. man. Gue breakout di sini ya, soalnya big group di sini. So where's, the, uh, so where's the join button? <laughs> um, wait, wait, Steffi, we're not in a room. Everyone here right now is not in a room yet, right? Yeah, yeah. Lu tinggal join aja, click breakout room, and then join. Right, right. You got you find it, boo. It's in, yeah, it's in more. Lurus buka more dulu, more breakout room. Okay, got it, got it, got it, got it. Give me one second. Yeah, I'm just gonna wait for a room yang kosong and I'll just join that one. Jo, gue gak join ya. Kita stay in this room ya. It's too big oh, soalnya. And we'll okay. just stop up ya. Yeah, when for it's sure, done. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Santai. See you.
terus baru kita doang juga ya kita break up <laughs> we can lanjutin our break up room aku jame is here hi jame is that ryan yes it is hello hi, hi jess oh hello i cannot see blurry Blurry? Blurry? No, it's just really far, not blurry. Yeah, well, the camera is focused on something nearby, and you guys are all the way in the back, so that's what's. Yeah, terlalu jauh. Yo yo yo. Eh, kok recording? <laughs>